Jeff, how are your thoughts on the drama? And that's, you know, all encompassing. I know you had said during the year that, or, you know, maybe towards the end that the stuff that Seth Wickersham had reported on, and we've all talked about, you know, uh, nonstop, was really a story earlier on in the year or in the midpoint of the year. But by the time we got to the end of it, it had pretty much been settled. Do, do you still feel that way? Because it feels to me from the outside that nothing's really been settled. Yeah, I mean, it's 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 interesting because I, I never tried to... I hope it didn't come across that way. I never tried to dismiss the fact that there was clearly some tension because there was, and there's no denying that. I thought because, or I know because they, they had some success, they were able to work through it. It wasn't perfect. And I think Robert Kraft even saying that they did have to have that meeting after the season, obviously there was enough on his end where he has to say, I want to make sure I, I can take the temperature of the room. Kraft also said something something interesting last week or whenever we were in Orlando for the owners meetings that he um, losing my train of thought here. He I mean. There was clearly something there and are they still all pissed at each other? Do we still got issues down there, Jeff? That's the question. All right. So, oh, that's he was saying this is why Belichick tells these guys to shut up in the month after the season (laughs) because he doesn't want them to go out and say something stupid act off emotion you saw what brady did in that youtube documentary series he said you know he comes across not looking like a guy who wants to play the the till his mid 40s that he's basically advertised for most of the last decade you know you see gronk who was legitimately mauling retirement when he said it but probably should have taken a step back and not allowed that to get into the public there is some drama there's no doubt yes there is some drama still lingering I don't think that this is anything that's going to cripple the franchise. This isn't anything that's going to, you know, completely uh, you know, ransack the potential for success. But I think some of that did linger. And I think that's possibly why you see guys like Danny Amendola not willing to take a hometown discount. And, you know, Dion Lewis, who was a little fed up with his usage in the playbook, similar to uh, in the Super Bowl, similar to Malcolm Butler to a lesser extent, of course. And I think that's why you are seeing some of that. Again, I'm not trying to say that all this has to hit the fan and and they're doomed and they're going to go eight and eight. I think they're going to be fine next year. But yeah, there is still something there that we have to continue to keep an eye on. So to me, the questions about the on-field success are sort of separate from what's going on off the field. I mean, they're, you know, they're still going to be good. The division still blows. I mean, no one's talking about seven and nine or these things leading to seven and nine. To me, what the story is, does it hasten the end? You know, if if they were all willing to stick together for another three, four years, are they now only going to stick together one because, you know, because of all the crap that transpired? I'm, I'm not worried about them not being good. I'm worried about them, the thing ending before it would have ended. 